And um, I wanted to, uh, before we start, just want to like share a little information about who we are as far as the women in communications concerned. Um, our national chapter was founded in 1909 by seven female journalists. Um, they took steps down. I'm going to read right what we, just a little information about who we are. Uh, they took steps uh, down a path that has blazed a trail for women in communication for uh, more than 100 years. In this 20th century, AWC continues to evolve, always looking at opportunities to develop its members professionally and pave the way to even stronger connections between members across the nation. So we're looking at this Twitter space as an opportunity to share more information about us globally, because right now we are having um, men and women listening to us right now from all over the world, from India to Africa to the UK. So everywhere besides, I mean, even with the United States, I'm thrilled to say that I've had a lot of DM and tweets some great friends through Twitter spaces. So a little bit about AWC, we're a professional organization that champions the advancement of women across all communication dis disciplines by recognizing the excellence of promoting leadership and presuming its member at the forefront of the evolving communication era. So that brings us back to our Twitter spaces because this is where the future is. Audio uh, social is... I feel my opinion is here to stay. And so that's why we're going to have a panel discussion. And I want to go ahead and turn this over to our communication director, Emily Powell. Thank you, Tanya. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm the communications director for AWC. Um, very excited to be moderating today and really excited to have some amazing women who are really much more versed in the world of audio social than I am. And I like to think that, you know, we, Tanya, myself, Alex, who's on listening. I mean, a lot of us were on Twitter from the get-go. We were, like, talking amongst ourselves when it first came out. But, you know, as, as new things like Twitter Spaces come out, um, as Clubhouse came out, I mentioned before, I'm on Android. I all of a sudden was behind on things, and I, I wasn't able to use it until they allowed Androids to get on. And so uh, we saw a lot of social media happening in front of our eyes that we couldn't be a part of, which as many of you I'm sure understand, was quite frustrating on our end. So when Twitter Spaces came out, we started jumping in to use it. And so did, again, these amazing women on the call today. So um, I can let everybody give a quick introduction on themselves. But briefly, we have Samantha Kelly with us. She's at Tweeting Goddess on Twitter. And she is a Twitter expert, an author, a community builder. She's the founder of the Women's Inspire Network, which is a global online network for female entrepreneurs. We've got Samantha Demers, um, at Samantha Demers on Twitter. And she's got a background in events, marketing, and communications. She co-hosts three weekly Twitter spaces. So again, she definitely knows this space really well, and I can't wait to hear from her. We have Shannon Skinner on with us at Shannon underscore Skinner, and she's an award-winning author, an international speaker, writer, radio host, and host and producer of the television show Extraordinary Women TV. She's also using Twitter every day of the week, sharing inspiration and talking to people. And Tanya, who you've been speaking to, Tanya Schultz, at No Aging. K-N-O-W-A-G-I-N-G -G on Twitter. And she's our president for Association for Women in Communication South Florida. She is the host of Social Chats. She also helps all of us run our podcasts, our websites, our digital, our video, our audio. And she's incredible and amazing. So welcome, ladies. Thank you all for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having us. It's exciting. Hi, everybody, and hello to all the people who just joined. It's lovely to see people from all over the world joining me. I have Sheila, Victoria, Jerry, Mark, Ariel. Oh, my gosh, Dion from, uh, oh, we have Dion Kombusho. Oh, Mike, hello, everybody. Hi, Sharice. Hi, Raffaella. Hi, Alex. Ah, so exciting. Hi, Stuart. Well, hello, ladies. This is Shannon. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm looking forward to it. And I'm just amazed at your tech abilities. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> well done. We've come a long way, huh, Tanya? Oh, my God. I'm, you know, I'm a makeup artist. I'm not really a tech person. 
she says that, but she can she can do makeup just as well as she can crawl on the floor and plug together <laughs> servers and televisions and video cameras and all the things for years now for us. So she is uh, she's more techie than she lets on. <laughs> <clears throat> but today I'm really excited to talk to you all about audio sources. And um, oh, don't forget Samantha. I didn't get uh, Samantha to come in. Say hi, Samantha. Oh, I'll just say hi. I put the hi of like, so <laughs> hello, I'm talking to you here. I'm talking to you know, play space with people that I've seen in my room and in other people's rooms that I've connected with. That's what I love about spaces and social audio because you really get to know people. I agree. I, I think I feel like I feel like a lot of most of these people that are in here I know already. I feel like we created another type of community like we did in South Florida. When I'm pretty much uh, Alex DC is here. He's uh, the co-founder of Social Media Club South Florida. He's joining us today, so I'm excited he's here too. So it's just you know, it's wonderful. This is like kind of like the next community that's being developed. Audio social. Back to you, Emily. My first question to everybody is this is it's booming and I know for me like I was a little zoomed out being on video so much I tell Sonia all the time I don't want to put on makeup just to talk to people so I'm wondering and I'd love to hear from each one of our speakers today what is it that made you make you know what what is it that brought you over to Twitter spaces or to Clubhouse or any audio social in the first place and what do you think the benefits are about video if you think that there are and we'll start maybe um, Samantha. Uh, well, there's two Samanthas. Let's start with Samantha Kelly. <laughs> two Samanthas. Yeah, we just did that to just really confuse the issue, you know. Um, and actually, Samantha and myself and Shannon, um, we actually met on Twitter Spaces. So I joined Twitter Spaces. I'll tell you, I'm Android. So first of all, there's a lot of discrimination against Android users because Clubhouse, for example, I couldn't join Clubhouse. And everyone was saying, join Clubhouse, join Clubhouse. And I was like, no, 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 I was too busy. And I was like, no, no, no. And then when Twitter Spaces launched, I was like, oh my God. And I even got, actually, Jerry is here in the room. Jerry, one of my kind followers, sent me an iPhone so I could get started on Twitter Spaces. So thank you, Jerry. So I was able to start on Twitter Spaces and then they got the Android version. So that is how I ended up um, in Twitter Spaces because I'm the tweeting goddess and oh my goodness, like, Twitter is my business. Like So I had to. I had to go to Twitter Spaces, <laughs> so that's why I'm here. And I have to say the relationships I have built, the women I've met, the guys that I've met here, really, really good people. And it's just like any other platform. I just decided to try it. Um, and I have to say, I love the fact that I'm sitting here in my dressing gown, full disclosure. I'm in my pajamas and the dogs are at my feet and I do not have to put on makeup. Mm -hmm. so that's what I love about audio. <laughs> I don't disagree. <laughs> um, and Samantha Jeffers, how about you? Do you feel the same way? How do you, what do you love about audio social? Yeah, I love the connections that I make more than in other social media that I've been in, or even on Twitter, just with tweeting or even writing threads. Hearing someone's voice, you hear so much more of them. You hear little tidbits of their life, like Samantha Kelly's in a dressing gown, and she drinks tea, and like things that. You could write in a tweet or you could have an Instagram picture up, but it's different when you're just chit-chatting in a room and, and it just comes up and you get to know little things about people. So that's what I love about Twitter spaces and social audio. And um, how about Shannon? Do you feel the same? Is it more personally safe than video? Well, I I think and I love it. And I actually came to, uh, I started um, Twitter spaces uh, I jumped in when I first 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 saw the purple bubble, um, because I wanted to be able to make a difference in people's lives every day, instantly. And I was in lockdown in Toronto because of the pandemic, and I saw it. I knew it was for me right away, so I embraced it. And um, and I what I love about it is the words that the voice medium gives us. So in media, we talk about how television is a cold medium and, and radio is a warm medium. And what we mean by that is with television, you have that 
really protect your energy. You've got to push your energy through the filter, the mini filters of a camera um, and audio just to sort of reach out to people. Like, so you'll see with television hosts, they really sort of rep their energy and push it through. But audio, you don't have to do that. So I would speak really quietly and you might sort of suddenly like lean your ear in towards the audio because you want to hear. And that is the intimacy of uh, the voice. You know, if you think about the times you've been in your car and listening to a radio interview and it's really compelling and you just feel like you're right there with, with the host, with the interviewer and the guest and you're right there enjoying and being part of their story. So for me, it's the warmth, it's the, it's the intimacy, it is the, 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 the authentic storytelling. I think, I think you just said that so well, and it really is um, the, the energy in which you have to emote and the high energy that you need to have for video and for television, you're right, it is, it's so much more natural and so much more personable on audio. Tanya, how about you? Um, I'm actually live tweeting as we're talking. <laughs> I'm tweeting you guys as we're talking because I was like, you know what? I'm gonna tweet while we talk. So, um, I like everyone else. I mean, I was one of the early. I, I was invited to Clubhouse, and I didn't. I'm, 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 I have always been very obsessed with technology and social media, and I always want like to know everything, and I always want to be, you know, just just all around community development. And when I was opportunity to join Clubhouse, I joined Clubhouse, but didn't have that loving feeling even though I knew some of the people in there like I did with Twitter and you know the funny thing was I was on Twitter back like 13 years but never really used it as much like I did you know I stopped using it for like three years and then when the lockdown happened and I just you know I wanted to be able to find out what everyone's doing and I was just looking I'm obsessed with the trend on Twitter so I was started going there and I started hearing this thing about audio social and you know, as the founder of Social Chess, we started out on a radio station um, back in 2010. So I was excited about this. I said, I always loved audio. And I, I figured, you know, why not? Why not revamp my brand again? Because I was planning to do more video. And I just got tired of just, I, I spent most of my time getting ready just so I could look half decent. And that's so tired because I've been like connecting wires and trying to figure out how to work this machine or that machine. So um, audio to me was a, a, a fantastic opportunity to meet new people. And like I said, I've been on Twitter for 13 years, but I never have ever reached this much, this many people. I mean, I met, I actually met both Samantha in one Twitter spaces. <laughs> and it was kind of confusing at first. Because <laughs> so I was like, is this this Tweeting Goddess and it's Samantha Demers? And I was like, oh yeah. And then um, I actually was on uh, Tweeting Goddess's show, her show. We chat a little bit. And then Samantha Demers and I, we sat for like two hours talking. And then, I mean, like, so again, you know, the connection that you make on Twitter Spaces is so incredible. And right now, you know, what I have a lot of the people in here are, I know personally, because I've talked to them, I've been in their spaces. Ariel, I was just on Stewart's today. Um, so there's such great opportunity for connection. But the storytelling, like, like um, Shannon Skinner was saying, is so crucial where you can utilize this space to tell the story that you want for your brand or for your clients or, or just to connect. So that's one of the things I, I love about Twitter Spaces. Have any of you uh, used Twitter Spaces yet? I, like we're doing a lot of these hybrid events. So we've got an online component and a real life component. Has anybody used Twitter Spaces yet at an event or in an event capacity? I know some of you run your own rooms. I'd love to hear some more about uh, the opportunities you've had with that and maybe what some of those challenges are as well. So what are some of the the uses that you found both business-wise and, you know, as well personally, but for your business and to, to promote those events or to reach people in that capacity? But actually, um, hi, Samantha, a year. I just put up a picture of that my husband just took of me on Twitter spaces right now in my kitchen, <laughs> just to prove I am in my dressing gown. Um, <laughs> I just put it at the top of the nest there. Um, yeah, so I remember I interviewed uh, Hosseen, um, who's really, really an expert in Twitter spaces. And um, we had a live, we went live.
live. We live streamed it to Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook. And then afterwards, we were talking about Twitter spaces. So afterwards, we actually opened a Twitter space, which was fantastic because it really brought the whole thing to the next level. Um, so people got to see us, got to meet Hoseline, got to get to know him. And then we were able to actually invite new people to Twitter spaces and do, do little Twitter spaces less. And it was really cool. And even now, using the hashtag, if everybody uses the hashtag, um, Rise of Audio Social, you have a chance to get listed on the, I'm tracking the hashtag. So um, you get a chance to get listed on the uh, hashtag that could trend if we all use the hashtag and start commenting about what's happening in the room. And it might attract even more people. So it's just powerful, powerful. I love that. And I love... I love that your husband also put up a picture of you and your I just saw the dressing gown picture. That's fantastic. <laughs> and I think, uh, well, actually, let's go back to the other question as well. Has, has the other, the other Samantha or Shannon or Tanya, have any of you uh, used audio spaces yet as far as uh, maybe at an event or working with a client or bringing in business that way? What are some of the uses that you found for it outside of, uh, I haven't launched mine yet, but I'm planning to, um, you know, you guys know I'm, I'm, like, I'm obsessed with crowdfunding. <laughs> I love helping people make good money. So um, I was in a Twitter space. Well, I actually was looking for Twitter spaces because soon ho I'm hoping I get the tap. So when I get the tap, I get to be able to find all the different uh, Twitter spaces. But um, I was following the hashtag Twitter spaces and I ran into Dexter who is from, he lives in America, but he's from Fiji. And he's telling me about how he's using Twitter spaces um, to help the people that are having problems with COVID in Fiji and that they're doing a musician's live stream. So I said, you know, let me join in and I'll, I'll help you guys promote it. And so we, um, I, I joined in last Friday. It was three hours long. And I just see an opportunity here for crowdfunding because they raised almost um, $4,000. Um, they, they had one performer and everyone was involved. There was like almost 200 people in their space and people were donate, donating. And I just see that as such a big opportunity. So that's what I'm planning to do um, for some of my crowdfunding projects I have with my clients. I love that. And I definitely can see this being such a great use for crowdfunding. Absolutely. I've always found Twitter in general is a really great place for crowdfunding. So, you know, the, the next question that I have is this does, this type of um, platform does make it really easy for anybody to put any sort of content into the world, um, which I think is really exciting. And I think that um, again, it, it adds a really important emotional element to whatever we're putting out there as well. And so I think, as I believe it was uh, Shannon who mentioned, you know, just the whether you're whispering or lowering your voice, raising your voice, the energy of your voice, all of that sets the mood um, here when we're talking about audio social. And if you don't have the visual aspects, we don't have the video, and all you have is your voice. Um, has anybody found any challenges? I mean, I know for myself, it's the technology side of it and making sure that um, I don't, let's say, drop my spaces as happened last time in the middle of me speaking. So has anybody found any challenges with it or anything that they're hoping Twitter uh, works on? Um, this is Shannon. So I, I think technology has been um, quite a challenge. I think that we, we can all agree with that. It's, it's been a, a challenge and as it's in beta. Um, and I would imagine that a lot of those bugs have been hard out. Uh, the one thing I would like to say is that one of the challenges with, with social is, is how easy it is to talk. Um, and let me explain. So in my spaces, I, I run inspirational spaces. Monday to Friday at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We talk about a range of subjects, but um, sometimes it can get quite personal. And I find that that it, for some people, it can be very easy to overshare um, and share maybe private information that, that perhaps in any other setting that they may not. And then once it's said, you can't take it back. And then, of course, you add on top of that, sometimes, um, you know, spaces are being recorded. So there, there's a challenge because it's so easy to talk. It's so easy, especially if you're, if 
your hosts are really friendly and warm, then I find that it's easier then for people to, to share and overshare. So I, I say that because there's pros and cons to everything, and I, I, we I no need to be mindful with what information we're sharing. Like, we might not want to say what hotel room number we're in, and that our fact that our homes are empty, and you know, giving the burglar our addresses to, to come in and burglar our homes, you know, kind of thing. So that's the one thing that I, I've been, you know, when I'm asked about, uh, do I have any tips and cautionary tales, that would be it. It's just be really mindful of the, the private information that you're sharing. I think that's a fantastic tip because I think we really do all think about that. You know, I don't post on my Facebook unless I come home from someplace and then I'll post it. I was away, but I, you know, you don't think about that when you're just chatting with somebody in some of these spaces. So that's a great tip. Does anybody else have any tips or again, you know, any of the challenges that you face, but any tips that may have come from those that you'd like to share as well? Well, I was hosting, I was part of a Twitter space. Um, we were just testing and then Aria was here with us. And some random people start popping in with like one follower with weird images. They were just, I guess they were trying to, they call it disruptor. So I, I think like if it, you know, one thing I realized is I get so many followers, you know, the more than I, I, I've ever thought I could get. And I literally would have to check them out just to make sure, you know, how long they, when did they join Twitter and, and how many followers do they got? And is it a real picture or is it a fake picture? Or, you know, and what, what are they tweeting and stuff? So I, I'm just saying, you know, when you get, it's, it's exciting when you first do your first Twitter spaces and then you start seeing people following because they were in your in the room. But, um, you, got, you know, it's like, watch who you let into your, your space. Like real life, yeah. You know, watch who you let into your space. And that's something I always say as well. Um, you know, if if you are hosting a space, so one of the top tips I can give you is, you know, have a look at the people. Actually, everybody do that now. Have a look at each other's profiles. Click on the people. You're probably doing it already, but click on the different people who are here. Give uh, Jerry a follow. Give Sheila a follow. Give Ariel a follow. You know, click on the people. Look at their profiles. You know, uh, check them out. And most people will have a bio. They'll have a nice picture. That, you know, if they don't have their bio filled in, or if you look through their last three tweets and they're all negative, you don't have to follow that person. You don't even have to let them up to speak. So just be um, discerning, you know, about who you let up to speak because it's your space, it's your Twitter space, and you have to protect the people attending as well and look out for them, you know. Um, so really, that's the top tip I can give you is, you know, if you're going to have a Twitter space, promote it beforehand like we did with this one. And, and thank you, everyone, for coming along. Thank you. It's lovely to see all of you here. Um, but, you know, and then during the space, also make the most of that opportunity like I'm doing. And like, actually, I'll tell you, Victoria's doing great tweets there. She's commenting. She's she's using the hashtag rise of social audio, you know, and, um, you know, the more you participate during the space with the emojis and all of that, it means you get on people's radar. Like, I'm more likely to follow you if you mention you know, oh, so then tweeting God has said this or said that. That's going to make me feel good. I have a, an ego as big as everybody else. So I'm going to be like, yay, great. That makes me look good. I'm going to retweet that, you know. So um, just, um, you know, make the most of the opportunity when you have your space. Invite people up who you really feel can add value. You don't have to add everybody. You don't have to. Some people get invited up and then they don't speak. It's like, okay. But, you know, invite people you know are going to add value. It's your it's your Twitter space. So use it in the way you would if you were inviting people up to the stage, you know. So um, that's my biggest tip, I suppose, to look at people's bios and, and follow people. It, it, like expand your network tonight, right now. It's, uh, sorry, it's nighttime here. It's half past 10 here in the evening. Um, so, you know, follow each other, support each other. I just want to sort of my tips are from the spaces I've done. I, I've done a few one time spaces, but then like you mentioned earlier, um, Emily, I have like three different ones that I do on a regular basis with different people. And so with each of those spaces, I have a co-host, um, which we can't officially co-host in spaces yet, but it's really great so that we can brainstorm on the topic. And then while we're in the space, 
especially if there's someone that's disruptive, we can keep it on track. We can DM each other and say, hey, do you know this person? And, you know, be able to, to keep things going if, if one of us gets, you know, cut out because there's, there's a bug in the space and so we can't speak or one of us gets kicked out, the other one's still there to kind of hold it together. Uh, so I think that co-hosting, especially right now, even though you can't officially co-host, it really helps to keep your space on track. And uh, especially if there's people that are disruptive and want to take over and steer it in a direction that you're not comfortable in. There's some posts that I've heard that are really assertive. I'm not that assertive. It can, it can tell people like, hey, you know, stay on topic. But I've gotten better, though, at like muting people or just taking them down from speaker to listener if they are very disruptive. I know that that's been an issue with a lot of brands that have been using Twitter spaces as well. It's just that fear of spontaneity when somebody is basically going live. And I think typically so many of us, you know, in marketing or um, even just in our own personal things, we're so used to curating so much that's going to happen through social that to give somebody else the platform and not know what they're going to do or say um, can be fantastically exciting, but it can also be very nerve wracking. Um, so do you, you know, those of you who do host through Twitter spaces, how do you keep everybody on track? Do you find yourself saying, you know, all right, let's bring this back to the main topic or do you sort of let things take shape within the rooms as you go on? It's Shannon. It depends. Um, it depends on the topic and, and how how um, keen I am to stay on topic. Sometimes some of the better rooms are when they're in open discussion. You know, when you just leave it for, you know, what do people want to talk about today? What's on your mind kind of thing. And they can end up being really fantastic discussions and really dynamic. So it, I, I think it depends on what your intention is and, and your purpose. I've had spaces where I've had a topic and it goes off the rails and then you bring it back and it goes off the rails. And sometimes when it goes off the rails, it's, it's a good thing. Sometimes it's not such a good thing. So I think it just depends. Um, I do mine regularly, so I don't get hung up if it goes off the rails because I don't probably doing another one I'm I am doing another another one the next day so um but it, again it depends and if I'm doing an interview that's a different story my interviews I stay on I stay focused and um and that's a different story than just having a um in, you know an open space my spaces are not as organized as Shannon's and what I do is <laughs> what I do is I actually Look, this has helped me, folks. This has helped me get through the pandemic. We were in lockdown here in Ireland. Um, we're only starting to reopen now since December. You know, and it's been really, really tough. And a lot of people, I think, have struggled through this pandemic. So for me, it actually helped me in the evenings. I'm not too keen on what's on TV. I'm kind of sick of TV. And um, it, for me, it was great because I just sit at my husband can watch, you know, Wheeler Dealer and all those stupid programs that I don't like. And I can sit here and go on Twitter spaces, you know, and it's really fun because he's in there watching what he likes to watch now. And I'm sitting here in Twitter spaces. So this is real life, folks. Every single one of us in here is a human. So we've all struggled and we've all suffered in some way through this pandemic. So for me, it helped me. You know, I speak if I'm feeling a little bit lonely and I've just finished work or I've had a really busy or tough day in work. I actually open a Twitter space and I call my Twitter spaces a cup of tea. Join me for a cup of tea. And they're quite popular because people like them because there's no there's no um, topic. There's no, it's just come and have a cup of tea. And I'm finding it really nice for meeting people from all over the world. People I would never have spoken to ever, it, 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 even on Twitter, you know, new people that I've met. And um, I found it really good for, for me, for, for helping me, you know, get through those bad days, those good days. And a lot of people here are entrepreneurs as well. And we can chat about things and things that happen. And it's really nice. So um, that's what I use it for really at the moment. I just, um, I'm the newbie. <laughs> I just been listening to everybody, following everyone. And again, I said I, I met both Samantha's in, in the same space, and I was like, and in that moment, I was like, women in communication, we need to host our own Twitter spaces because I think this is the next tool. I mean, I, social media is a tool, but audio social media is, I feel, it's going to be staying for a while past the pandemic. So um, I started doing Fridays uh, on my Twitter space, 
I do one on my personal one, and soon I'm going to be launching from my social chats channel, um, which we do. We usually live stream Monday through Friday from one to two. So I'm looking into that to develop more because you know my Twitter spaces will post the social chats show, which has every day we have a different type of conversation. So for me, I find Twitter Spaces fantastic. I, I just made a post last night on my Facebook page, actually. You know, I, this is how I wake up. I don't even take coffee. I just um, opened up my Twitter app. I read the trend section, pop in into a Twitter space, <laughs> listen to some people. And I feel uh, motivated. I feel happy. I think uh, uh, Samantha Demons is the one that I always see. And then I see um, Shannon's in the morning. And then Tweeting God is my gosh. I love hers. So um, everyone here that's in this room, that's part of the Twitter Spaces um, community, I literally have met them all. I've jumped in, I've listened. Sometimes I might jump in and, and have a different opinion. And then not everyone might like it. But then some people would DM me and say, hey, I'm sorry, we didn't mean it to be like that. And I'm like, no, no worries. We, that's why we're here. I'm not offended. I want you to be, you know, open enough to sit, to disagree with me. But we're, we're kind to each other. That's the most important part. And Connection is what I love about this whole Twitter space. But that's, that's my schedule every day, <laughs> seven days a week. I'm on Twitter spaces. It's, uh, you know, Sunday, Samantha Demers ha has a really nice one in the morning. That's the one that I'm more organized with that uh, I, I plan with my friend Isha. She lives in India. So because it's 7.30 p.m. for her, it's 10 a.m. for me, so it's a compromise, even though it's Sunday, I, I get up and make sure that we go in our space. We should talk about women and business and different topics. And so, um, you know, back to the question earlier about, you know, the tips and challenges and things like that and how we keep people on topic. For those ones, because we're focusing it on, especially women in business, we can sometimes have people that will come in and say to us in the middle of the conversation, well, you know, this applies to men too, so you should, it should be, you should rename the space. but. You know, we have to just tell them that we're we're women. So our experiences as women, but they're welcome to share. So that's where we have a, a little bit of an issue and happy to bring people back on track of the topic. But um, what's helped when we want to have like a really specific space and not just a chit chat one is doing a little bit of research ahead of time. So with the first one we did about uh, the imposter syndrome, I looked up a Forbes article, I got some statistics. And so when we had some people that um, we're either we're getting too negative about you know how they've been bothered at work, and we, we let them share their stories, but to bring it back, you know, or or when the conversation had a lull and, and nobody was really saying anything, then I could share a statistic or something. So I find that that's helped when I've had spaces that have more structure. And there's a few other ones that I do that are a bit less structured. And so in those ones, we have a topic, and then people just share from their heart. So they, I like that about spaces that they can go whatever way you want them to go. The important thing is, though, one of the things that you probably noticed I did straight away was I said hi to everybody in the room. So I know some new people. So, I'm going to just enjoy this Chris, you know, Silver, and I, Mark, and I know our auntie, and I have a
Um, so always remember that as well if you are hosting a room. Hi, Princess, lovely to see you. Hi, Catherine. So I'm getting waves um, from people. Thank you, anti Twitter. I'm a little bit afraid of anti Twitter, actually. Oh. <laughs> so just, you know, be careful. Like, fill in your bio, folks, or, you know, we won't be inviting you to speak because it is important, you know, that you actually feel you can trust the person that you're really going to speak. But welcome everybody that's here in the room and have given their time to listen to us and it's just a little tip that if you are um if you are hosting a space or you're planning and hosting a space always remember that the people that are coming are here it's actually it's like twitter sound it's about your audience it's, it's actually not about you so long and um, it's about our audience how can we bring value to them and how can we help them and i have to say shannon space is very lovely i love shannon space that looks so bad the spaces like like these women have actually we become friends all of the women in twitter spaces i've actually got a twitter list of women on twitter spaces if anyone wants to go follow us and check it out so you know make little twitter lists of people that you meet and uh, keep an eye on them that's important when you do see them live you know like i would start a space if i saw someone else has a space i would start a space and um, just kind of uh, respect you know, them as well you know so things like that just to get things you know just keep in mind So I um, I think our Emily got like, kicked off. I just sent her an email. Emily, I sent you another invite to come on to be a speaker. Thank you, our DM from um, AWC. I can see her being in the room now. Yeah. yeah. No, she's here, but she's not. She's, um, they got, they kicked her off. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Tanya, I have a question. Yes. Yes. So um, thank you so much for that. That was absolutely wonderful. And on all of your spaces already. Um, I'm Sean, I'm part of Women in Communication, um, and this is my second day utilizing Twitter, period. Tanya <laughs> helped me to build this out, and I'm very thankful for Tanya and for introducing me to this space. Um, I have tried out on your social um, specific Facebook house, it just wasn't for me. Um, if someone died, um, feels into the vibrational frequency, what people are saying, what the content is, what they're talking about. And it's really important that it's something that is meaningful to me uh, because my time is very meaningful. So I'm thoroughly enjoying this space, thoroughly enjoying how we uplift and empower every single person that's in the room. I'm thankful for that. Um, and a new person to Twitter, um, for some of you that are that are um, hosting, that are speakers in this group, what would you, how would you begin um, new uh, new uh, new chats with individuals? Um, would it be content? Would you seek out individuals and you know co, -co collaborate um, and build something, or to build a platform? What would be some tips that you would suggest? Shine in a line with just this what comes to mind, um, you know, um, to talk about collaboration, um, to collaborate with people who have uh, similar values. So other people are companies where your values are in alignment and uh, then to shine. I suggest our Twitter space. <laughs> and then and then you know I, i'm telling you i've never met so many people I, I literally i started one last week my very you know just, just you know just talking about social media and i started looking for the hashtag twitter spaces and following twitter spaces and just jumping in other people's spaces just to listen to what they're talking about and you know again looking at everyone's um profile and Follow them, and then you know I DM them and say, "Hey, I really enjoy your um, space. I'm, I'm hosting one tomorrow. I'd love for you to join me." And um, just you know, they a lot, most people pop in, even if they don't speak, they'll pop in, or they'll they'll come up and speak. So it's just yeah, do it. That's, yeah, yeah, that's a really good tip. So really good tip if you're. Um, your Twitter spaces, what you could do is you could just join in other Twitter spaces, just sit and listen. And then if you can add value, then request to speak. If you can add value or if you can help someone. Um, and then, you know, I didn't start my first space to move a good while after I was kind of jumping from space to space. You'll find your, your tribe, excuse the kind of, you know, inverted commas, you will find 
with your people. You will like it, enjoy listening. I, I love this. I love Shannon's voice. I love the sound of her voice. When I met uh, Samantha, I was like, oh, my God, Samantha Green. And then there's actually another Samantha in Twitter spaces as well. So it was kind of fun. We kind of made a joke about, you know, the three Samantha's, like Charlie's angels, you know. Um, but, you know, it's like, you know, you will meet people and you'll either gravitate towards where you won't or, you know, you click on their profile and you can say, hmm, I might actually be able to help that person. I think I know some of them might need that service. Um, and I have actually had um, some work from Twitter spaces, from people hearing me give Twitter tips and then they said, actually, I can have a one-to-one with you. Would you be able to do um, a one-to-one coaching session with me? Also, um, a couple of people, women in Twitter spaces, joined my Women's Inspire Network. Um, and then also, uh, I had a social media book camp and a few people from Twitter Spaces booked a ticket for that as well. So it is possible to monetize Twitter Spaces as well, but I don't sell. I never sell. I just mention, like I just sit there, what I do. And then people go and have a nosy at your profile and they have a nosy at your website anyway. I mean, hands up, give me a hundred, everybody who has clicked on other people's pictures here in this space and had a look at their website, and had a look at their bio and had a look at their tweets to see what they were like. You kind of know by people's tweets what they're like. You know, I just have to look at the past three tweets from people to know whether I'm going to like them or not. And if they're just giving out, giving out negative, negative, I'm not going to follow them. <laughs> if they're putting out good content, if they're doing positive stuff, I'm going to follow them. I mean, it says in my bio, I'm a nice people collector, so I like to keep it that way. I send them. So I am uh, trying to get Emily on here. Emily, can you keep plus? So we'll play down. So, um, Shannon, can you share um, your thoughts if she was to start a, if you were a newbie, how would you get more followers? Well, I think Samantha touched on something that gets me share value. Uh, first of all, Samantha Dama? Yeah, I think that Shannon has spawned with be yourself. Um, the great thing about Twitter is that you can share so many different ways. I see people that are sharing short videos, people that send fun tweets, people that send threads, with no longer thoughts that you want to share. Thank you. 
people, and I think that's what's helped me on Twitter. And I had an account for a long time. I didn't have that many followers. I didn't use it much. I just got active on Twitter on March 6th, and so I can start writing and practicing writing. And one of the reasons I came to Twitter was because I didn't know anyone here. All my friends and family and the other circles I did real life on Instagram and Facebook, they didn't want to write my real thoughts, which now not evil or bad. And then there was more, you know, they got share usually about things like the marketing or personal growth, a lot of mixed practice, and I, I found spaces. And at the time of March 6th, I had 101 followers, and now I have over 1,600. Because I follow people, if I follow something, if I was writing, I've been practicing it. I think we got about five minutes and then I want to go ahead and invite some of the listeners up because I think I, we have some uh, people wanted to uh, join us. So Emily, did you want to finish with your questioning? Because I know you had a couple more or one more. I did, but if, if any of our listeners have some questions, I mean, I'm happy, I'm happy to turn it over to them. They've been so patient for the last hour. So if, if people have some questions, maybe if they want to pop up um, the emoji of, peace sign or wave at us and we can let you we'll give you some the ability to speak here or you can send it in a tweet using the hashtag as well um in the meantime though you know my my last question really because i'm still curious i never really did get a chance to jump onto clubhouse and really explore it i just want to know why twitter spaces over some of the other audio social apps. I know Reddit is coming out with their own, but why Twitter spaces over Clubhouse? Um, and John, I know you said that you just couldn't really, you didn't feel comfortable on Clubhouse, and I was wondering why that might be. Is that question to anyone in particular? Or? Um, to anybody, I, you know, I'm, I'm curious overall. Um, okay, yeah, Twitter spaces. 
Yeah, that, yeah, let me tell you. Okay, right. I'll just be honest, right? This week, I have been having issues like you just had, Emily, coming into spaces and stuff like that. So it is still a beta, you know, and it is still a bit ditchy. So I, I actually got kind of, you know, pissed off as I got here. I'm going up to Clubhouse. So I went over to Clubhouse and then um, I started um, building relationships over there. And then I saw some people who were similar on Twitter spaces. But the thing about Twitter spaces is you have the immediacy of tweeting out into my own community that I've already built. So I have a bigger community over here. I have a bigger profile and my tweet would be more powerful over here. So I could share it immediately from Twitter space and drive people straight to Twitter spaces without them having to leave the platform. So that's one advantage of Twitter spaces. Another advantage of Twitter spaces is the lovely emojis. I love the emojis. I love the way I could give feedback while you're speaking and give you a hundred, you know, but I like the emojis. You don't have them in Clubhouse. Another thing that I love about it is you can cook. If I'm talking about something, like I said, oh yeah, I'm in my dressing gown, you know, and then I was able to put up the picture, which hopefully made everybody smile, you know, and that was like, you know, I could pin it to the top of the nest here. So anyone who's a speaker can pin a tweet at the top. So if you're speaking about anything or if you're saying, oh yes, uh, last week I saw a giant, I don't know, rabbit or whatever, you could actually put it up, put up the tweet where you saw the giant rabbit, like, so people know what you're talking about. So that's what I love about Twitter Spaces. My think that Twitter Spaces is going to be huge, everybody. I really do. I, I, I'm very loyal to Twitter. I've always been loyal to Twitter. Um, I, I don't work for the branding. I wish. I don't get paid or anything like that. But um, I love Twitter and it's changed my whole life. So... You know, I do feel that it's worth your while investing some time in Twitter spaces, the people, the community here. I see Matt there in the audience. I see Queen. Like, there's really good people here and really helpful people. You will find the people that you want to hang out with, you know. So just um, I would explore it more and um, build some really good relationships here and you will watch the magic happen. I do feel that Twitter spaces is going to be the head of Clubhouse. I do feel that. But I still like the guys too, though. <laughs> so this is Shannon, and um, I was on Clubhouse for Spaces from, and I thought that I would really love Clubhouse. I don't, and I, I honestly, I can't tell you why I don't. I just, I cannot put my finger on it. Perhaps it doesn't, there's, I, I just really don't know. My, my energy is not connecting with it. As soon as spaces launched as i said earlier i immediately knew it was for me i just immediately um so and, and as you know what samantha had said here I mean, the ability to share images um to be able to direct message people tweet all at the same time is beneficial sorry i had to tickle my throat <laughs> so i had to cough um so all of that is 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 truly I, I think beneficial. The other thing for me is I don't have the bandwidth to be building you know massive um, um, following, spending, to spending to spend all my time across so many social media apps right now. You know I really I think that's like Samantha was saying here earlier. I didn't I really embrace Twitter that much. I've been using it, but I hadn't really figured it out. Uh, and I made a conscious decision that I was just going to really focus my energy for a while on Twitter. And I have not really been that much in, into Clubhouse um, really since. So I think you can't be everywhere. And it depends, again, like I said earlier, you know, everyone's on social media for a different reason or for their own reasons and I just for me I don't have the bandwidth to be everywhere and to split my energy everywhere so I've made a, a conscious choice to just to focus here for now not to say it's going to be like that forever but just for now and I love hearing you say that because as somebody who does social media for a living that's what we tell our clients as well you can't be on every social network and do them all as well as you'd like to. So um, finding where, you know, the platform that speaks to you and then putting all of your efforts into that platform, I think it's more beneficial than spreading yourself across, you know, four or five different platforms overall. Now, I see a bunch of you have now been made a speaker. So if anybody has a question, um, as we have a couple more minutes here, I know we hit the six o'clock hour. 
Hi, uh, Aarti here. Uh, uh, and thank you for having me. Uh, thank you, Samantha. Uh, I don't know the name of the host. Uh, sorry, I joined in a little later. Thank you. Thank you for letting me hear. I just wanted to add a few points. Uh, we were discussing about uh, the power of uh, audio and uh, Twitter spaces. I am one example of a beneficiary. I'm a beneficiary of a Twitter spaces. Uh, I, I have never otherwise would have uh, come closer or would have come to know Ireland and people from Ireland. Uh, yes, internet brought a uh, world together. It really shrank to uh, going further. Uh, I think when you hear someone's voice, uh, yes, it, it feels nice. You really make a connection. And no matter how good their writing is, listening to voice makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. Uh, so spaces is going to stay and spaces is creating that value which is immeasurable. I'm from India right now in USA and I'm connecting people all over the world. This this couldn't have happened otherwise if, if this audio is not there. Uh, second point, I believe Emily or uh, Tony, someone asked about how to gain followers. Uh, everyone everyone wants followers. I, I, I completely agree with that. Uh, just one, uh, my opinion, when you make only a numbers game or when you make only a followers a game, <laughs> this becomes uninteresting. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm like Samantha. I love Twitter. I love Twitter as a platform. Uh, forget about the compliments and the benefits that you reap out of it, uh, like meeting people, getting business, monetizing. But Twitter as a format really makes you think. Really makes you think what do you want to say? Whom do you want to connect? What kind of a work you want to do? And that's the power of this uh, platform. It makes you become more. It makes you want more. It, it changes the perspective. It uh, makes you a little compassionate and kind uh, because you see uh, other people's struggles, uh, their life journeys. So just one, not advice also, just a suggestion. Just don't make it only a numbers game. The moment you make that, you'll, you'll start only... Uh, seeing the numbers and you'll get bogged down by oh what is not working what is working just just stay here for people just stay here for what it makes you do um, yeah that's that's about it thank you thank you i think that's such a beautiful statement so thank you because i think you're right um you know it's, it's quality it's not quantity and it's the, the people that you can connect with and the conversations you can have the stories that they tell and it's not how many followers you spoke to that day or how many people came into that room it's it's the connections that you can have there and i, I do think that's the amazing thing about social media overall um but particularly about twitter because you're right we have to do it you know in a short amount of characters and really target in what we want to say and here in spaces um i mean i have a character account that we have to stick to but we also can't talk for an hour so we have to you know really be thinking about what it is that we want to say and and really focus on those connections and i think that's a great point hi guys emily oh i, I just wanted to follow up on the quality not quantity part of it uh, two days ago when tanya said this i had a bunch of like um sports profiles jumping into my room and at first i was so excited i wanted to know who they were were how they found me and like to be friends and all that stuff and it turned out that those were uh the trolls and i had like five other people in my room and they did their thing eventually i blocked them and kicked them out but the people who connected with me on a really good level they stayed there I thought like, oh, I'm such a terrible host. I let all these people in to say all this stuff, do all these things. But the people knew that that was an accident on my part. So eventually those disruptors fall to the wayside 
while those people you made the good connections with, they stick with you. And like Alberto and Solar Life and Matt and Queen Amy, because they know your reputation, they know who you are. So if you accidentally do by some chance let those people in, it, it, it's not the end of the world for you. Don't let them don't let them take away your agency. Don't let them take away your reputation. That's such a great tip, Jim. And you're right, you know, this is new for all of us. And so I think it's great that um, the people here in this room, the people that y'all have met on here, the people I've met, that we're in it as a community. We're building this community together and being really accepting of these learning curves or, you know, when you get kicked out in the middle of moderating an event or something like that. <laughs> it's very understanding about it. So it's, it's a, you know, I think this is great to build this together too because it brings everybody closer also. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Kiki. Um, since we're talking about uh, ways to increase our following and do it uh, in a safe way, I have been um, I have been working with that too. I'm an educator, so I'm trying to um, expand my uh, my PLN, my professional learning community. Uh, and I have been joining a lot of chats. That's another way. I know it takes more time. And um, however, I have met many, many people. Um, also, I don't know who's interested here and who is a teacher or who is in education or who just loves Google. Um, you can join the Google Global Community and you can meet educators and interesting people and bloggers from all over the world. Uh, and uh, that's, that's something that you can do if you are interested in exploring another side of yourself or getting to know more about education or learning how to, you can help students or educators. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Can, can you share that in the nest? I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I, I think it's, uh, you tweeted and then... Um, Ariel, did you want to tell me? Ariel, Ariel, please help me. I've done it. Just like you see in this room, there's that line with that up arrow. So you click on the tweet and you see to the right side that uh, line with the up arrow. And then you see it says like post to space. And then ah. I'll sit up here. If you're really having a troubled time, just tell me which one it is. And I'll do it for you. <laughs> okay, probably I will. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I'm going to try to do that, okay? Okay. Thank you. And it's another person that I've met on Twitter Space is uh, Princess Enya. I, I, we actually talk, we text each other. <laughs> And, and I, I, I'm actually going to, we're planning an event uh, for women in communication. I invited her to be one of the speakers also. Hey, Princess. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Hi, Anya. Hi. Who's everyone? We are great. I think I, I, I wasn't expecting me to put her, put her on the spot, but, <laughs> but you know, like I said, it's, uh, it's one of the things that I love about Twitter space is the connection of people that you never thought to ever meet and talk. And Enya's from Canada. So I would like to say hi. Uh, and I just said hi, Enya. I really want to say thank you. I'm so appreciative that you were in my space this morning. So Thursdays, we talk about... Uh, I have a book club, and uh, we talk about books and what we're reading on Thursdays. And uh, thank you so much. She, she provided uh, some suggestions for a book and uh, got us talking about some important subjects. So she may seem really quiet at this moment, perhaps because she's feeling put on the spot. But I want to thank you that you did contribute quite a bit to our space, you know, my space this morning. So thank you very much. Great. <laughs> Do you mind if I chime in? Please, absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, I, I'm new to Twitter Space as well, and what I love about it is 
you can think a lot more on audio than you can on video. Because I think on video, you have to, you're thinking about so much more that's going on around you. Um, where audio, you, you really can just listen to voices and think. Um, and so I'm starting to, to do more on YouTube, but I really, really like this. Um, and loving what you guys are talking about, the suggestions and everything. Um, you guys were saying so uh, just want to say thank you for having me here um and really join um, and as you can see i have dogs by invitation <laughs> uh, but really enjoying this and, and thank you for having me here definitely and i think you make a good point there too like i know when i'm on video i'm probably paying more attention to what i look like on the video than i am to what's really being said by anybody who's on that whatsoever so on audio i feel like i'm listening more and i'm engaging a lot more with everybody um than i am when i'm, I'm on video and i'm you know i'm not saying you're checking out what's in the background in your living room or on your bookshelves or anything like that so i think this has been this is a really nice change to all of that, where we can be a little more focused. And, 100%. Yeah, Louis, and Louis, I can hear the dog squeaky toy in the background. That's so cute. Oh my yes, gosh. I have, uh, I have two people that are running around behind me. Complete maniacs, so I apologize. But the dog is very, very cute. That's the thing, it's like dogs aren't self aware. It's like they're uh, always yeah. naked, but they're always like just wanting to like do stuff. <laughs> Um, can I just mention and give a shout out to Rosaline, who is in the room, that was the gentleman I mentioned earlier, where I said that we did it live, we did a restream, um, and we went live, and then we went live to Twitter, LinkedIn, and then we actually opened a space to show people how to use spaces, so that's one way that we used Twitter spaces I was telling you about earlier, so welcome Rosaline, and um, happy birthday, I hope we had a nice birthday, and Lance is here as well, so it's just really, um, I just wanted to mention that, you know, Twitter spaces, you know, has, has, you know, really has changed my experience of lockdown for the past few weeks. So I am very grateful to everyone here for your support and for welcoming me into the community as well. So um, I just wanted to say that and I want to say thank you to Tanya as well, because Tanya, you know, we built a connection. She did an interview for my Women's Inspire Network and, you know, um, for the gentleman, mental health, mental weapons. I mean, really, you know, you will build valuable relationships here and it is really powerful. And like, you know, even the dogs barking in the background, I think since the pandemic, we're a little bit more tolerant and accepting of real life now, you know, and the people who are going to this is going to sort the men out from the boys. The, the people that would turn their nose up at a child running into a Zoom call, that just doesn't happen anymore. People know that we're human and they know that, you know, we're, we're human beings. We're all just trying to do our best. And, you know, if, if you if you help others and you add value, you will uh, succeed on Twitter spaces. I invited Hosling on to speak if he would accept... Um... Um, we had a couple more people they wanted to share their thoughts and I wanted I went ahead and approved them. Um, I have um, AS is on as a speaker. Uh, thank you everyone and uh, especially I would like to thank the host for organizing this uh, session and uh, giving me a chance to speak. So I'm very happy to join you all. Uh, I do conduct many sessions on this, basically I'm from India and at present I'm working in Saudi Arabia right now. So on different issues on education, on health sector, or civil issues in the society there, most of the time I will be active on uh, Twitter and this is a good platform where we can uh, discuss many things, we can share and immediately we get the responses. And uh, I really, I should appreciate my IT minister, Mr. KTR, because after this government came into the power, they gave uh, every department with the Twitter link directly. So uh, it's very helpful to the society as well as uh, every month. Uh, only this I would like to share. Basically, I started my career with the teaching. Then I've uh, gone through with many departments working there. Then I'm in Saudi right now. So 
I'm very thankful to everyone here because you are listening to me. And uh, I really uh, appreciate for giving me a chance uh, to speak in front of the top most leaders over here. Thank you. Thanks once again. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. And yes, um, I think India is the only country that they're allowing to have uh, to host Twitter spaces with less than 600 followers because yeah. of what's happening over there. And I think you, um, AS, I think you made a really great point as well that um, the, the concept of, of Twitter spaces means that we have immediate responses as well. Because the responses have always been pretty quick on Twitter, more so almost than any other social network. But being able to open a room is, is an automatic ability to connect with people and have responses right away. And I think that's so important, um, again, especially in India, but anywhere in the world where so much is happening at any given time. Uh, it's definitely a chance where you really just, you can't feel alone. You have a room of people and they're there to speak to you. And I think that's, and that's what social media is supposed to be, right? So I think it takes it to that next level. Yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Actually, I'm from Telangana. Uh, only in our state, we have freedom to speak uh, about the other states. You're aware. You're aware about it. Uh, they don't have the freedom. The way we respond, the way our departments respond. But only in our state, we have the permission to uh, express our issues or bring to the notice of the top officials. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, see, that's all. These are all things that we would never even you know about. Yeah. I wanted to get Alex DC on, but I think he left already. Because Alex to me is like the guy uh, for South Florida. He is the co-founder of Social Media Club South Florida. So I always call him the godfather of social media. <laughs> That's when I it's my nickname to him. Because he knows all things about social, social media. So <laughs> but he, he has left and it's about 620. Um Emily, did you have any more questions? Um, no, I think, I mean, one of my questions was, you know, on tips and things like that, but I noticed everybody was covering that when I Got kicked off, so I think my questions pretty much um, were wrapped up on this end. I would love to hear, you know, if anybody else has anything to add about some interesting things they've seen or they're doing on here. Or, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear it. This is Shannon. Um, I just like to say that you know, experiment as much as you can with spaces and have some fun with it. Try different things. Uh, do do what what is natural to you or, or create spaces based on topics that you're interested in um but do all of that you know create your own spaces join other spaces have lots of fun create meaningful um connections uh do great stuff inspire people empower people but there's another side of that equation that i would like to raise and that is turn the phone off and go outside into nature and go for a walk you know, shut it all down, find balance, um, and because, you know, all of this is really great too, but we also see a rise of addiction to our phones, right, and um, to social media. So if I, if I had one message I'd like to leave you with is do whatever you can with Twitter spaces, have fun, use it as much as you can. But remember to go outside to nature and go for a walk. And um, when we can, you know, we're in a pandemic, but when, when we can, um, you know, be with people in, in real life, go out for dinners, have a glass of wine, and put the phone down. And yeah, that's a great tip. And I actually did that earlier, and I try and do that. I'm always sharing my pictures of when I'm outside. But another point, uh, which is very valid, Shannon, what you said there, and it's important, you know, um, you know, is is when you build a relationship here on Twitter Spaces, take it to the next level. Take it to DM. Take it to a Zoom call. You know, take it to, my, that's my dog snoring in the background, by the way. <laughs> Mental wealth. Mental wealth. Just so you know, my dog is snoring in the background, if you can hear. Um, but um, yeah, take it to the next level. Take it to DM. Then take it to a Zoom. Take it to an email. And I know for a fact that Jose and I will meet in real life someday. 
I know that myself as well that we'll meet in real life someday because I met, you know, I've met there's so many good relationships here. I really want to have a Twitter Spaces conference. Why not? Why don't we all meet in real life? So this is this is possible. Anything is possible, folks, once things open up again. But in the meantime, let's keep ourselves safe and build the relationships here online now and then take them off to the next level and, you know, make, make that nurture those relationships that you've built here. Absolutely. And that's, that's such a great point. I mean, even like throughout this conversation today, I've connected with so many of you. I know a few of you responded to my tweets. I responded to a few of yours. Like, it's such a great way to just really organically start these relationships. I think that's like where my best Twitter relationships have come from. I have good relationships, people that I see their writing, but when they come in my space or I go in their space or see someone, I've seen their tweets, but I hear them talk. It's just on a whole new level of, of knowing someone and you don't know, know them, but I definitely have, you know, you, you can get a good sense of someone from their tone of voice. And then when you read their tweets or see them, you have just the next level of connection. And there's people that I've seen their tweets and then I've seen them in spaces or heard them. Then we've DM'd and at some point said, hey, you know, like let's set up a Zoom call or you know, some kind of video call. And then I, I spend time with them even more one on one to get to know them. And I, I wouldn't have done that if I would if get to know them so well through speaking in spaces. Um, Emily, do you remember the early days? I, I remember meeting so many people on Twitter that I only know them by their hash their <laughs> handle. Yeah. So when we meet, we have we used to have tweet ups and back when I used to drink. <laughs> When we meet, <laughs> we didn't, we, people, yeah, we didn't have, we didn't know each other's first name. <laughs> it was like, and then we bring our spouse with us and they would look at us like we're weird because we didn't call anybody by their first name. We only call them by the handle. <laughs> I remember being out one day actually and speaking to a girl for like a good half an hour and she's like, no, we did. I definitely don't know who you are. And then my, my best friend was like, that's Emily on the app. And she was like, I know who you are. <laughs> yes. We all knew each other. We just didn't realize it. Um, but I think, I, I mean, social media overall has truly, I mean, it's changed my life. It's changed, I'm sure, for everybody on this call. But I think the audio social is life changing again in yet another way. It came about became so big because we were in the pandemic and people needed that touch point and needed to be able to connect and hear other people and not just, you know, read type on Instagram, which is pretty, Instagram in itself is, is mental health damaging. And so um, I think this just was such a great way to really make people feel like they had other people there. And um, I think this is going to create stronger connections going forward than any of the networks have previously. Yeah, and I have heard several people um, say to us in spaces that they were feeling lonely and they just wanted to talk to someone. And that is, you know, it, that's powerful, you know, being able to actually be there for someone and just even, you know, they just start speaking and they're just lonely, you know, and then you just get to know them more. It's just really nice. You know, it's really nice. Absolutely. And I mean, like, if in LA, we got a lot of traffic, so it's like, hey, like, if you're stuck, they just put it there. You may not be able to, don't see their face with their emojis, you know, <laughs> you know? Or, or when you're going out for a walk, so you can kind of, like, not, not be a or anything, or just, like, so, sometimes you like to go out for a walk, but not, like, be alone, you know, you, you want somebody to walk with, so I just, like, maybe put the headphones on, and I do that. Yeah, that's actually a great idea. Because I go out a lot and I walk my dog. I'm always calling my mom and being like, you have to talk to me because I don't want to be out here by myself. Um, that's actually a great idea. Bring my headphones put on spaces. That's one thing I love about Twitter spaces because you can learn so much from so many people. Um, and again, I'm, I'm going to call out host Elaine because I, I, I actually didn't even know him. I actually found him through my search on Twitter spaces. And then I jumped in one and he was just telling all kind of information. So I really um, appreciate him for it. Yeah, we didn't even, we weren't even following each other until Twitter spaces. So there's a lot of people here I didn't even know on Twitter. And I'm on Twitter a while. And so it's been really nice to meet new people and build new relationships. But one thing, you know, just, just to be aware as well, there are lots of things um, like 
the fact that we can put the stuff up in the nest, the fact that we can share this straight to Twitter, the fact that we can um, see all the people here and follow each other, like Twitter. And also another thing I love about Twitter is, uh, we haven't mentioned this, is the captions, view captions. If you click the three dots in the circle below, you can turn on the captions so that for people who are hard of hearing, um, they can actually... Um, you know, see what people are saying in the captions, which is, I think, a really big plus for Twitter spaces as well. That I agree with. Um, one of my best friends is deaf, and this has become her absolute favorite platform for that very reason, because she is able to connect in a way that she wasn't able to when everybody was jumping onto Clubhouse and such. So, yeah, that's a great point with the captions. Yeah, and I, I know my daughter is deaf too, so yeah, so I so that's why it's something I'm always looking out for, or you know, I can see. Um, but yeah, it, it's powerful for, for for people that have that difficulty, and uh, it's it's one thing I would give Twitter credit for is that they've done that. You know, it's very important. I also want to say I, I'm just so touched by everyone here and everyone trying to get back. If, if anyone, I, I have 17 years of brand new experience. If anyone wants any free help, I, I'd be more than honored that it's a set up a, a DM or a conversation, but I'll just go up and help you out. Yeah, I'm more than happy to help for free. So um, anyone who needs it, I'm more than happy to help. Just let me know. Um, there you go. That's the kind of thing. Thank you so much, well, mental weapons. So now you have a new fan here because that is what Twitter Spaces, ha that's what happens in Twitter Spaces. I call it Twitter magic, but we'll call it Twitter Spaces magic for today. And that's exactly so well done. I don't know your first name. Um, what's uh, your first name? It's Max. Sorry. I, I thought, Max. Was kind of oh, that's idea. my dog's name. Every dog's name, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's the dog. That's oh. the dog. His name is Max. Um, but yeah, thank you, Max. But that's the kind of thing, everybody, that happens in Twitter Spaces. There are people here that will help you. They will reach out. I, I reached out to Samantha today, actually, but I, it was only because I made a mistake. But, like, you know, it's like, um, you know, there are people here that genuinely, like, I think the demographic here on Twitter space is slightly different as well to Clubhouse. You know, you have more people who are on Twitter, and the Twitter demographic is age 35 to 55, the highest growing demographic are the over 55s, professional urban so you have a, that different demographic you have a lot more instagram audience on clubhouse so just to be aware you know that this is a place that you can find good people that will do lovely kind things like you just did max well done i agree and thank you max and i think overall twitter has always been the platform where people really do seem to really want to help each other. Um, aside from maybe Reddit, I feel like this Twitter is just the number one platform that you put something out there and you need something in this world. You need, a, you know, a contact or information or resource and somebody out there is going to send it to you. And I have noticed that that's getting stronger once you're in spaces and you're in the rooms and people really do want to just connect and help. And I love that. So Tanya, I don't know if you had any other questions or anything else that you have on your end wanted to speak. I think I know everybody on the Sunday that I saw wanted to say something. We got to jump in if anybody else wants to add it. Yeah, please raise your hand because if not, um, you can go ahead and round up the space. Because I, I, you know, usually we do our our um, meetup sixty minutes, and I I put down two hours. On my other stuff, just just in case, because I've been I've sat in space. My my fear was because going I was going to go a lot further. Um, because once you open a space, sometimes it it can go on. I I think I've I've sat in watch area. He had like a Twitter space. I think I, I think he had like three or four hours at one time. I had to like jump out and come back. <laughs> so <laughs> because the people like shift in and out, so that that's the thing I gotta do. It's like I gotta go. I gotta go. Because, because because every single time you think like the conversation is kind of like peering out or dying, someone else comes in with like a whole new perspective on something, and then and then it just becomes so interesting. It's like you you, you know when you're like on a game show, it's like what's behind mystery box number three? That's the feeling, and you're like, I want to see what's over there. <laughs> I want to put a shout out for Evie. is here too. She's, I want to say hi to her too. But um, no, I, I'm pretty good. I think this has been a very success, and uh, we're gonna host another one next month. 
and we'll send out, you'll, you'll see more uh, invites. And we, I really appreciate all the ladies who joined. And Emily, like always, you do an, an incredible job. Incredible. That's why I'm so thrilled that you're our communication director. <laughs> Thank you. I love doing it. But y'all make it easy, too. We had great speakers today, so thank you, ladies. That was amazing. Thank you for having us. And uh, Samantha, I think you should say something, because you've been very quiet. <laughs> I was just going to say thank you for inviting me. I love talking about spaces. I, I love spaces. I tell everybody about spaces, because I think that they're so great, and the, the connections are great. And just like Max earlier, offering help, I, I just find people can get so much help just by talking and sharing and like ariel said too it's about like people shifting and out so i find it's like around 40 ish minutes i'll have like new people coming in so then if i have a hard stop I'm like hey it's been an hour i gotta go now but yeah the, the conversation shifts and it's so interesting so spaces are just the best uh, thank you thank you everyone uh, i had a good time uh, being on this piece thank you Thank you, everyone. Um, I, I, I put recording because we are, it's being the, like, that's another thing I love about Twitter space because you can listen live on the desktop. So it's being shared in our uh, Women in Communication group page on Facebook. And then I'm going to download it and then we're going to put it on Restream and it will be out onto our YouTube channel and also our um, Twitch. So just to let everyone know, um, like, you know, like I said, the, the Twitter spaces gives you such so many opportunity and um, I can't wait for more of the feature that comes about that they will be launching and um, let's follow each other and let's connect offline by DMing each other or, you know, if you're in the area in South Florida, Emily and I and uh, Terry and Jean, we're all down here. I'm going to go visit you, Tanya. <laughs> you should. <laughs> we got great weather. I, I would I would wait after November because we have this thing called the hurricane season. <laughs> yeah, don't come right now. It's yeah. hot and it's going to get rainy and not good. But November, November, December is lovely down it's, here. It's a, us. Yes, it's the but best you time. Have, you have alligators there. <laughs> not where we're at. No, not where we're at. Okay. <laughs> So we, we have the beaches. We have beaches, and it's beautiful. And I think, I think they pump air here. Some <laughs> it looks everything's green. It's really nice here. But I, I just you know like during the um, I've had some friends that uh, I literally adopted them. They're from Canada, and they they got stuck here, and it was not fun. They actually flew into South Florida as they're announcing there might be a hurricane. They didn't even think about it because it didn't dawn on them that we are South Florida, but we're tone. And they got stuck here for two weeks with me. So, I'd love for all you to come visit, but I don't think you want to be stuck here. <laughs> well, I, I have to go now, folks. It's nearly midnight. Yes, so get some sleep, Samantha. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you. Bye, bye Samantha. Bye. Good night. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and check the room. Bye, everyone. I appreciate bye, you guys. Bye. bye. bye.